If you've been working on or learning about digitization, there's a good chance that you're familiar with the term metadata. Metadata is data that provides descriptive information about other data. This video is going to focus on the metadata of digital images and how it can be used to embed information to your digital image that will then travel with it wherever it goes, just like information that's been written on the back of a physical photo travels with it. Metadata is hugely important to managing your digital photo collection, and if you haven't been using it, you should start now. I'll be showing you how to add and edit metadata using Windows File Explorer or Max Finder. You won't need to download or purchase any software, and it's easy to do once you know where to look. Of course, there is software that you can use to do this as well. Adobe's Bridge is a popular free option, and if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, I can do a video on that too. Just let me know in the comments. I think most of us have come across an old family photo with people in it that we were not able to identify and felt the relief and gratitude of finding information written on the back, describing the people, the event, the date, things like that. Many of us are also familiar with the inevitable frustration that comes from no information at all. Metadata is the digital version of these written captions and will not only add tremendous value to your digital photo collection, but will be equally valuable to future generations who otherwise might not know any of the information that you've attached to the image if you hadn't taken the time to do it. Adding metadata to your photos will not only allow you to preserve any information that was written on the physical photo, but by adding descriptive information, you'll be able to easily navigate, sort, and find your family history photos when you need to. There are several types of metadata. The three main types are administrative, structural, and the type we'll be focusing on today, descriptive metadata. Descriptive metadata is exactly how it sounds, and for our purposes today, it is information describing the digital image. This might include the names of the people in the photo, when and where it was taken, relevant keywords, and other useful family history information. The purpose of descriptive metadata is discovery and identification, so it allows you to easily sort and search the images that you've used metadata to classify, label, and organize. Metadata can be created automatically or manually. An example of metadata created automatically is the EXIF data, which is the information captured when the image was created. Typically, this will include the date, the time, possibly the location that the image was captured, the camera settings, or if the image was created on a scanner, the scanner settings. I'm going to show you how to manually create descriptive metadata that will be permanently attached to your digital image so that ideally, no matter who you share it with or where you upload it to, that information that you've entered will stick with it for anyone or any program to see. So the metadata that we'll be focusing on today is the kind that will manually enter for what is called IPTC metadata, which includes the descriptive information I mentioned earlier, such as the title, description, and location. We'll start with Windows File Explorer. So locate the file for your photo on your PC using File Explorer. For me, this is the Epson Scans file folder where all of my photos are initially saved once I've scanned them on the flatbed. Within this folder, I edit the names of the files and the metadata before moving them to this ready to store file right here. From there, the files are moved to their proper ancestor file where it belongs. You'll find the metadata under Properties, which can be accessed a few different ways. You can click on this up here that says Properties, and it will open the window for you. It'll pull up the general metadata first, so you'll see here is where you can change the file name, which I always do last when I'm ready to move the file to its proper folder. You'll also see some of the EXIF data that we talked about earlier that was captured when it was created, like the date and the time. Then if you click on the details tab here, this is where we'll be entering our descriptive metadata. So you may have noticed that little text pop up that tells you that you can also type alt enter and that's a shortcut that will open up the properties for you as well. You can also right click on the image and scroll down to properties from there. So those are the different ways that you can access the metadata. I've got photos from this scan session. As you can see, I scanned the front and the back since there's information that was written on the back as well. Before I go in and individually enter the metadata for each photo manually, 
You can add the same metadata to them at the same time as a batch if you have the same information that you want to apply to all of them. So for example, I like to tag any photos that came from my Grams photo collection, which is what I'll do here to show you as an example. So you select all of the images that you want to add this information to, click properties, and again, go to the details tab. The only metadata that I want applied to each of these across the board is the tag for Graham's collection, so I know where I got these photos from. Once I've entered that, I hit apply, and you'll see it's now saving that metadata to each of these files. So now that that's done, we can go in and individually see that each photo now has a tag for Graham's collection. I love tags. <laughs> tags will make your digital photo collection searchable and much easier to sort depending on what you're looking for. So if I go into the search bar up here and I type Graham's collection, it's going to show me all of the photos that I've already tagged as Graham's collection. Now that we've taken care of the batch process, let's go in and individually enter details for the photos. You want to pull up each photo and basically be a little detective. You want to analyze the photo and pull as much information from it as possible. So this is my grandpa. He was born in 1937 and seeing how small he is gives me an idea of the date of this photo as late 1930s. He's in his mom's arms and that's his sister sitting down there. They grew up in Florence, Alabama, so it's likely that that is where this photo was taken. You just want to observe all the available detail, big and small. Are there landmarks, animals, automobiles, notable items, anything that you might like to detail or remember about this particular photo. You'll also see here that the photos I scanned had writing on the back, like I said, so I made sure to scan the backs of the photo and that way I can include the original caption with this digital image. So we'll start by adding a title, Papa with his mom and sister. And for the subject, I like to use the surname uh, for one of each of my four grandparents, depending on which branch it is. So this is my maternal grandfather's line, so I'm gonna type Hillis. Then we move on to tags where you see Graham's collection is already there since we just did that as a batch. And we'll add more tags now. I include a tag for each ancestor in the file. So my grandpa, James, we'll add a tag for him as well as his mother, Jessie, and his sister, Peggy. I like to include the date as a tag since I'm not sure of the exact date here. We'll just say 1930s for this one. I also do tags for the location, so a tag for the city, Florence, one for the state, Alabama, and then another for the country, USA. In case I ever want to filter my photos by location um, and narrow it down, that's why I like to do that. I also like to tag my photos if they're in black and white or color. This is where you can get creative for the tags that interest you. I also like to add the era if that's applicable, so for this photo I would tag it as the depression. The tags can be really vague like male, female, married couple, children, or you can get even more specific and add tags for articles of clothing for example like a top hat. Then we will move on to the comments section which is where I add the original caption for the photo if there is one. I enter it here in quotes, so for this one it was just their names that were included. Then you'll just write any other details that you might want to include about the photo. So I'm going to say that this was likely in Florence, Alabama, but I'm not sure. It was the late 1930s. So that's basically what you want to do here. You can also note if the photo was an original or a copy of the original. Any information that you want to stay with that particular photo. There's also an authors field where you can enter your name as the creator if you like, or you can include your email for anyone that might be interested in contacting you about the photo. There's a field for the date taken, but since I don't know what the exact date is, I'm gonna leave this one blank. The date will be covered here in my tags and in the comments section, so this works for me. Down here, you'll see some of the technical information about the photo. So you'll see the resolution it was scanned at. It's close to the archival standard of 4,000 pixels on the longest side. 
we've got 1200 dpi so that's dots per inch and then you'll scroll down here and you'll see more of that exif information that was automatically captured at creation now that we've entered all of the information we'll go ahead and hit apply to save those changes to the file and now all of the information that i just added will travel with this digital image wherever i send it or wherever i upload it let's take a look at a few other pictures here so something else you might want to do as a tag for a photo like this is a military tag you could also add a tag for a specific war so world war ii um, you could include portrait as a tag with this backdrop and everything and the photo going on it looks like this was done professionally so you could add professional photo as a tag for me the more detailed tags the better you never know how you might want to search or filter your photos later so i tend to add as much detail as possible <laughs> So for something like this photo, you could add a tag for animal, horse. You could also add a tag for a cowboy. I've seen some people use emotions as a tag, so this one could be crying or crying baby. For professional photos, I always make sure to include the photographers as a tag as well. So for example, this photo was taken professionally and down here you'll see the photographer's information. It has their company name and it also includes the location, Leeds, which is another helpful hint since I didn't originally know where this was taken. So as you can see, I've added those tags to this photo as well. I always try to include the date and location in the comments, even if it's just a best guess. I'll add it and make a note if I'm not sure of the date or if it's just an estimation. So that's how you can add and edit the metadata for your photos in Windows File Explorer. Let me just show you really quick how to locate the metadata in Finder on Mac before we wrap this up. So again, you'll locate your photo in Finder and open the image. Then you're going to look right up here for inspector icon and you're going to click on that. That's going to pull up the metadata for this photo, which we just entered. So you'll see the name of the file with the file format and that EXIF metadata that was automatically created. Then if you click here, you'll see the IPTC data along with some general data and more of the format data. Then you'll find the tags here. So you see how all of the tags we just created transferred with this image and now display here. We can click on this little plus button here and add a tag if we want. So that's how you pull up and add or edit metadata on a Mac. It just looks uh, a little different. But as you can see, most of that information was retained during the transfer of that file from my Windows PC to my Mac. Now keep in mind that different programs may display and use the metadata in your digital image differently, but rest assured that the information will still be there embedded in the file, even if it's not displaying the way that you think it should or the way that you'd hope that it would. Um, everyone uses the information a little differently. You'll also want to add the metadata to your image before uploading them to a genealogy site like Ancestry or Family Search. That way, the information will be embedded and anyone who downloads the photo will have that information too. The information that you enter for the photo on those sites will not download with the image, which is why it's important to add this before you upload the photo. I'll be doing a video next week on uploading and downloading photos to and from genealogy sites like those. So if that's something that you're interested in, stick around. Until next time, thanks for stopping by Family's Legacy.